Well, it's not going to be just me discussing the NFL playoffs here. That would be boring. So, of course, we bring back Adam Record, a expert, an expert in all sports, as we know. And uh, let's start first things first. We got a crazy slate of NFL coming up for us on Wild Card Weekend. Three games on both Saturday and Sunday. First time that that has ever happened in the NFL. It's going to be absolutely awesome. Uh, let's talk about what we think the best game from that first weekend is going to be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if anything, I think I, I took this in two approaches. And without getting into too much detail, I think the most, or I guess the best game is going to be um, it's going to be Titans versus Baltimore. Okay. Personally, um, they've had really good games leading up to it. I think the most interesting, obviously, will be Steelers Browns. But I think best game that we can expect uh, a lot of good things, a lot of action, and potentially really high scoring between two teams will be Tennessee and, and the Ravens. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Actually, the the Titans are the third best offense in the league, and obviously anchored by Derrick Henry, a guy who. Probably won't win the MVP, but in in my opinion, is maybe the most valuable player on any team. Just in terms of if you took Derrick Henry off of the Titans, I think that's a completely different team. Um, and even mm -hmm. that being said, the Titans, or the Ravens, I should say, are favored in that game, uh, at least on the money line. So yep. that to me, that's a little disrespect towards the Titans. Like I know that the Ravens play in a better division, but you know the Titans still. Titans still won their division and they still have 11 wins. So that's a, it's a little disrespect there thrown at Tennessee. Yeah, absolutely. Just a little bit of shade. And that's why I think, you know, Mike Vrabel is a guy, is a coach, and as a player was someone that always played with a chip on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. You know, he did play for the Patriots, but I think he always, you know, it wasn't because he played for the Patriots. I think he always played as he was the underdog, which made him play yeah. better. And I think he really... Um, I'm blanking on the word right now, but sends that energy through his team. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So I, I really, I really think that the Titans will come out with a bit of chip on their shoulder and, you know, to really take it to the Ravens as they did, you know, earlier this yeah. year. Yeah, and that was a fantastic. Yeah, game, absolutely. So. And the Titans are a better offense than the Ravens. I mean, the Titans, like I said, are third in the league in uh, in total offense. The Ravens, I believe, are 19th. Um, that's not to say the Ravens obviously can't score. Because uh, they certainly can, but you know that's a good point. If 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 the Titans get a little bit of momentum early on, you hand the ball to Derrick Henry. If the Ravens can't stop the run early in the game, uh, then I think they could be in trouble. But the uh, the good news for the Ravens is they actually are a pretty solid run blocking or uh, run stopping unit on defense, eighth in the league mm -hmm. when it comes to total rushing yards, and uh, when it comes to rushing touchdowns given up. They're fourth in the league, and Derrick Henry, we know, has made a living out of getting in the end zone. So, uh, if there's any team that is built to stop the the Titans' offense, uh, that run heavy, heavy dose of Derrick Henry offense, at least in the AFC, it's going to be the Ravens. Yeah, and I, yeah, I just don't, you know, see it any other way. I can't disagree with you there. I just think that this matchup. Out of the most, I think outside of like storylines, I think in terms of quality of the two opponents, I believe this matchup offers the best. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The best in terms of quality. You know, so I'm going to take kind of a different approach to this. I, I don't disagree that in terms of the quality of the two teams, uh, that's going to be one of the better matchups, certainly in AFC. I would look at the the Rams and the Seahawks as being the two teams that in terms of, in terms of quality are going to offer you the best matchup and I say that now so we've seen the two teams obviously play twice in the regular season with them being in the same division and both of those games in my opinion were excellent excellent contests I enjoyed watching both of them because both of the teams match up so well with each other and you see it based on the results in those two games so the first time they played back in November the the Rams grabbed the win um and it was that was a that was a great game as uh, as i said and then i believe the the seahawks yeah the seahawks won the mm -hmm. second the, the yep, second matchup um and so they say the hardest thing in sports is to beat a team three times well you got each team coming in with a win so you've got the the rubber match here as it were and both games 
were, as I say, just just really, really fun to watch. The teams match up really well. The Rams have, um, I believe, the best pass defense in in the league, if I'm correct on that. Um, yes, believe, yes, I believe they have, they have the best that. pass defense in the league. The Seahawks have obviously come in with with a pass heavy attack, even though they use the running game to uh, to really fuel that. Um, when Chris Carson is on, the game changes for the Seahawks. Obviously, the Seahawks coming in with Russell Wilson, who, in my opinion, is the most valuable player. Um, maybe not necessarily the best player this year because he's had some 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 off games. But in terms of if you removed Russell Wilson from the Seahawks, in my opinion, they probably win like four games if, if someone else is the quarterback. Mm-hmm. Um, and you combine him with DK Metcalf, who for all the right reasons, has gotten a lot of headlines as he should. And uh, yep. And I think what you're left with is this classic battle of best pass defense versus one of the best passing offenses, one of the best rushing defenses in the league uh, when it comes to the Seahawks, against one of the best rushing attacks in the league when it comes to the Rams. Um, it's, it's a great, great matchup to coaches with different styles, to teams with different philosophies. Um, and it's it's always fun. I mean, since Sean McVay took over the Rams, their matchups with the Seahawks have always been fun. And so to get to see it on the playoff stage, I think it's the first time that that's happened since McVay took over the Rams. Um, you know, what what more could you ask for? I think that's going to be, I think it's going to be a great game. But I'm not disagreeing with you, Titans Ravens. <laughs> it is going to be a lot of fun as well. Um, for what it's worth, by the way, the Seahawks are favored in that game, and the over/under just at 42.5 right now, set by uh, um, set by Vegas. So that is that's the lowest point total predicted in any of the six wild card matchups. Yeah, and I mean it's hard to disagree with anything that you said because you're you're right on all that, and you know it's no surprise to me that the over/under is 42.5 given how little scoring was done in the first two Mm -hmm. games. I actually think that this third game playoffs a little bit of nerves, you know? I think that it will open up a little bit. I think we'll see a little bit more Mm -hmm. normal scoring Mm -hmm. game on this one. Um, With that said, I mean, I think, like you said, you make great points. It's it's interesting as the Seahawks have transitioned from a little bit of running to more pass heavy um, with the emergence of DK Metcalf and whatnot. You know, it's... It's kind of interesting to me because it's kind of, I, I, I almost classify this matchup the same as I'm going to classify the Titans and Baltimore matchup where we know what you know what you're going to get from um, the Titans. Yeah. You know what you're going to get from the Los Angeles Rams. I think it's just dependent on the variables of the Ravens and the Seahawks. And if the Ravens can establish a little bit better passing game like they did at the back end of the mm-hmm. season, I think the Ravens will be more successful and they will win. I think same for the Seahawks, except for in the running game. I think if they can establish a good running game against Los Angeles, yeah, I think that opens up the passing game a little bit more. Interesting. I, I, I think I think you're definitely right. It's like what team shows up because the Ravens from mm-hmm. all season long. I mean, they finished with with the worst uh, passing numbers in the league as a team, just in terms of in terms of total yards, in terms of um, you know all of that um but they also had i believe the fewest attempts the fewest passing attempts in the league so it's kind of that's yep. not what they're built around but you're right towards the back end of the season they started to rely on lamar jackson and, and the passing game a little bit more and it meant that you know they started to get on a little bit of a, of a hotter streak towards the end and that's what allowed them to ultimately make mm-hmm. the playoffs um so if that's if that's the kind of attack that they come in with, then I absolutely agree with you. We could see, we could see a different result, um, especially because the Titans, not not a great uh, passing defense, and they're 29th in the league in terms of total pass yards. So this is not a team that's yeah. built to stop the pass. It's a team that's built to to rush the quarterback and stop the run. So it's a very similar style, offense and defense. Um, so yeah, I mean, if the Ravens' pass defense is, is clicking, then it seems to be a good matchup with with a with a Titans yep. secondary that has struggled really for most of the season. Yeah, exactly, and and that's just I mean, there's a reason the Titans gotten a lot of high scoring games, you know. Yeah, true. So I would if you're a be- if you're a betting man, I would almost take the over in this game just because I think there will be a lot of points due to that, mm-hmm. even though the over is at 
What I'm seeing is 54.5. Yep, yep, um, could yep be, 54 and a half. A but, and, and so if you just yep. think about, I mean, that, it's a great point that you make because if you just think about Ravens Titans, well, traditionally the Ravens have been a defense heavy team and certainly this year, um, they are they are an above average defense just in terms of just in terms of total yards. Um, in terms of total mm -hmm. yards, I believe they are. I gotta look this up real fast. Um, yeah, they they are seventh in the league, so actually better than above average in terms yep. of in terms of defense. So this is a defensive focused team. The Titans obviously are a run heavy team, and so you look at that and you say, well, 54 and a half. I mean, that would mean that both teams would have to score what like it would be 27 points per team in order to reach that number 28 points per team in order to reach that number mm -hmm. but you make a good point the the teams even though they are not teams that you would think would run up the score the way that they match up with right. each other means that we could end up with a lot of points scored by both teams totally that's a good point that's a great point um, let me ask you this yeah it'll, it'll be it'll be really interesting to uh, see how that all shapes mm -hmm. out I agree let me ask you this, just just from a general point, because both of us, we mentioned the things that are pretty typical to talk about with the NFL playoffs. You know, we talk about the idea that there, you know, there's so much pressure. Uh, teams play differently in the playoffs. Some teams are built to win in the playoffs versus not, and we'll, we'll kind of get to that later. Um, but this year, obviously, is different because there's no fans in any of these games. Now, a couple of these teams. I think we'll have at least some fans. I think the Titans are going to have a couple thousand. That's the only one that I know for sure. I think a couple other teams might have some, but we're not seeing 60, 70,000 people packing out these stadiums the way we usually do. Does that change the way that we should be looking at the playoffs, looking at the way teams perform without the fans in the stands to maybe add some, some extra gravitas to the moments? Uh, personally, not really. I think, you know, it, such little fans has such little impact in my opinion. I think, as we've seen, you know, personally at least, um, we've seen in other sports leagues around the world, you know, I, I think having fan, like a lot of fans makes a difference, but you know, having this yeah. little, little amount of fans, it just, to me, doesn't really make that much of a difference, okay. honestly. Well, so compar compared to years where we did have full stadiums, you think there there is a difference this year, whether there's some fans or no fans. The point is, it's not full. They're not full stadiums, and you think that does make a difference in terms of the pressure that these teams might be feeling or, or the momentum that they might draw during the game. I absolutely. I think that we've seen more so this season than in other seasons some of the purest forms of player ability mm -hmm. um, just performing. You know, maybe you know you're on TV but it's not having that real factor of having real fans in the stadiums. I think you do, you got to see more raw player ability huh. um, compared to as with the pressure of fans, you know? Um, and I think, I, and I honestly think that that maybe is what makes him break some players um, in their careers, you know, that some players play with fans there throughout their entire careers, yeah. you know? And now, you know, like, and they do well under pressure. Right. It's great. You know, that's why those players keep winning. You know, you can say Tom Brady, for example. Yeah. Whereas now has played with minimal fans, and he's done probably even better, you know, than before. So that's totally that's an yeah. interesting way to look at it. So so to kind of to kind of take that to its logical conclusion, the num the, the one seeds in both the AFC and the NFC from from what you've just said, these are the most deserving one seeds there have ever been just in terms of at least maybe not de maybe deserving isn't the word but the most accurate one seeds in terms of with no fans with no other variable these are the two teams that are the best in their respective conferences because the only variable we have to judge is player ability yeah i think i mean it's hard to agree with or disagree with that in a way, but I think at least for like Kansas City, they had a few uh, fans in their stadium. Sure. And um, I, I believe Green Bay also did have a few fans in their stadium. So you know, it's hard to it's hard to say because they did have some fans, but like like I said earlier, I don't think they had the amount of fans that could really affect affect it. But just knowing that there is a little bit of fans there does maybe add a little bit more pressure. Yeah. Um, for me, I just think, yeah, I just think it's it's an interesting, it, you propose a great question here, 
And I think without, you know, with such little research or knowledge on it, you know, in terms of what we know of playing such few games, I guess a small sample yeah. size to boil it all down to, it's really hard to say how much of an impact it really does have. Yeah, true. Um, and a lot of what I'm taking is from watching English Premier League soccer, mm -hmm. where the away team won more often than yeah. not when they had no fans. Yeah when they've had no fans compared to in the past when they've had yeah, fans. Yeah, and, so. and that actually continues in the NFL. I mean, when you go back and do the research, basically home versus away, the teams are like, the teams are about 500. I mean, it's almost exactly even uh, across the entire season in the NFL. And so the idea of home field advantage, clearly this season, I mean, in normal seasons, it makes a huge difference. But this season, the idea of home field advantage pretty much means nothing. And that's not only in the NFL, yep. it's been corroborated, as you say, in the English Premier League, we've seen it in the NBA. It basically makes no difference at all. Uh, and so, really, what, what that leads us to is there is, as you say, no other variable besides how good these two teams are on the field. The home crowd will not play, an will, will not play a factor here at all. And so you're just looking at who the best team is on the field. And so then... I want to transition that into a discussion that we had just before we started recording, where if you look at the mm -hmm. history of teams that make the Super Bowl, there's very few one seeds from from both conferences, uh, which is I which was surprising to me. Um, and obviously, the one seeds get home field advantage throughout, but you know, there's always there's a degree of momentum playing away as well. Uh, when you listen to athletes talk, like you can get you can get a little bit of that adrenaline even when you're playing on the road because you have everyone booing you. Um, and so without any of that, do you think that we are more likely this year to actually see a one versus one in the Super Bowl or at least one of these number one seeds in the two conferences make the Super Bowl, which is something we haven't seen consistently over the last few years? And this is where I'm struggling with my answer still <laughs> <laughs> because we, we did talk about before, and I said, on paper, I personally believe the Chiefs and the Packers, on paper, are the two best teams in the NFL. And I, I, and I'm, in their respective conferences. Yeah. And I, I'm sure uh, that will get a lot of backlash, or I'm sure that does raise a lot of discussions from fans of their own teams, let alone just from anyone in oh, general. Sure. Um, but... I'm still I'm still up in the air on it. I mean, we'll obviously find out, but the Chiefs I, I oh gosh. This this is where my back and forth is. I'm still torn on it, <laughs> but I think the Chiefs have a greater chance of faltering despite having the technically better record. I the, I think the Chiefs have a better chance of faltering than the Packers do, just given how strong the AFC is and how variant of styles. Yeah get through amongst all those teams there um i think it's just going to take the right team to beat the chiefs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know whereas the packers i think i think any i think all but maybe two of those teams could beat the packers even though i think the packers on paper are the better team than all than all the rest of the teams uh -huh. in the nfc so it, yeah it's just it's a it's a it's a tough one for me really i think i i think Personally, if you want me to pick my Super Bowl, Super Bowl matchup, I think we could see the two number one seeds yeah. playing each other, but it'd be very, that's a very, like, almost ignorant thing for me to say, <laughs> given the court, given the course of history. Yeah, that's you know? true. But, so. I mean, you know, his, <laughs> history can change in any given year, and this would be the year, which exactly. is different from all other right, years. Of right. Course. Right. I think so. And, and I, I think it'd be, I think it'd be a little. I, I don't know, not off, but like it, to go back up my statement earlier that we're seeing the most raw potential players yeah. right now, I think that by predicting we would have two number one seeds in the final would back that yeah. as well. Yeah, so. definitely. I think it's interesting when you look at the two conferences. I've said this for a couple weeks now. The NFC is very top heavy, in my opinion. You've got Packers, Saints, Seahawks, mm -hmm. to me, have very much pulled away as the three best teams in the NFC. And then. You know, on the lower half, you have obviously the Washington football team, which is a seven win team getting in the playoffs because they win their division. And then you get a bunch of teams. You get the Bears, who I think are what, nine and seven um, that made the playoffs? Eight, eight and eight. eight. Yeah, yeah. They made the playoffs as a, as a wild yeah. card. So um, I, I, I think 
your top three teams are the best three teams in that conference. Whereas over in the AFC, you kind of have the Chiefs and depending on who you talk to, maybe the Bills um, are are the two at the top. But then you have all of these 10 and 6 teams that are battling to make the playoffs or 11, 11 and 5, 10 and 6 teams 11 that five, are battling yeah. to, to make the playoffs. And so you have a lot of these teams, a lot of the wild card teams um, that are kind of, they're all in the mix together and as you say there's a there's a, a really great there's a wide variety of teams that are there as well you have pass heavy teams you've got run heavy teams you've got teams that are built around defense and any one of those teams could potentially give the chiefs a problem um so so i mm-hmm. think the packers are the team that look like they could separate themselves just because it's very possible that they could get through the NFC without really seeing a team that's going to present them a big problem from a matchup standpoint, whereas the Chiefs Correct. are more yeah. likely in their two games to see a team that could actually present them with an issue from a matchup perspective. Totally. Totally. And I just, yeah, I, I mean, like you said, like the Chiefs weren't, I mean, I play fantasy football this year and, you know, whenever I had a running back come up against the Chiefs, which wasn't often but it, i definitely remember it and had it had it happen a little bit more than often yeah. historically the chiefs or maybe not historically but in recent years of playing fantasy football they haven't been good at stopping yeah. the run and i would always play my running back against the um against the chiefs so like for who's to not say that you know let's say the colts beat the bills um on you know on Saturday, yeah. then and let's then that means the Colts would play the, the Chiefs then just right. for all purposes here. I think the Colts have turned into a fantastic running team. You know Jonathan Taylor's bloomed yep. lately. Yep. I think the Colts have a better chance of taking down the Chiefs just based on the if they stick to a running yeah. game, just like as if the Browns are to stick to a running game, you know, or you know the Titans. Yeah. But you know the Steelers who haven't really had a running game recently, or the Bills who have a running game in a different way in the terms of quarterback, yeah. you know? It, it's, you know, it's all very it's all very different. There's a lot of good running teams in the AFC that could pose a, a threat to the yeah. Chiefs. Yeah. So I, I totally agree with you that, you know, maybe the Packers don't really have that sincere threat to them yeah. because there is no one way to beat them where the Chiefs, you know, there yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. Way to beat them, I, I definitely so. agree with that. And I think, um, assuming that they're, this is not a safe assumption, but let's say for the for the minute that there won't be an upset. The Steelers and Bills both win, and so that means that the winner mm-hmm. of Ravens Titans uh, is going to go on to to play the Chiefs. Those are the two best rushing attacks in the league right now. Ravens number one, Titans number two. So whoever comes out of that game is going to present a problem for the Chiefs, who, as you say, are not they're they're not great at stopping the run, and I think they're uh, what are they? In terms of in terms of numbers, they are. Um, oh, I just lost that one. Yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah, I mean they're just so they're 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 what twelfth in the league in 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 uh, mm-hmm. reverse twenty twenty first. Took me a while to get there. They're twenty first in the league in stopping the run. This is yeah. not a fantastic run defense. Um, whereas you know you've got. Like on the other side, you say there, there's there's not a clear weakness for the Packers. I mean, they're they're pretty much pr- they're pretty much middle of the road in they're pretty much average to above average in just about everything they do. Um, and so, you know, to which which goes to my point that whoever the Packers face, they've got a chance of beating them. Whereas the Chiefs, if they are to come up against the Ravens or the Titans, and then if they see um, if they see maybe the Steelers. Uh, that it, that could present them with some issues. Maybe teams that wouldn't necessarily try to shoot them out, but teams that have a mm-hmm. solid running attack that can keep Patrick Mahomes off the field and score points. That was the issue that we saw, for example, with the Bears-Packers game this past weekend. The Bears are a great rushing attack as well. They do a great job of keeping the other team's offense off the field, but they weren't able to actually convert red zone opportunities. Well, a team like the Titans or the Ravens, they right. could. So the best case scenario for the Chiefs is going to be that the Browns or the Colts ends up getting an upset win, um, and so the Chiefs avoid having to play the Ravens or Titans. Totally, totally. It's just, yeah, it's very, very, I mean, it, it sounds like it's very, you know, 
flat out there. We all know, if you know sports in general, it's not, you know? <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see what actually happens. Yeah. It just would not shock me. I, I, I feel more confident saying it this year than not that it really would not shock me if they, if like Green Bay made it, at yeah. least them as a number yeah. one seed made it, but let alone to have the two number one seeds make yeah. it. It wouldn't it would it really wouldn't shock me personally. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree with that. This of all years, if you had the number one playing the number one, um, that it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me as much as it would have in uh, in years previous. And so with that, uh, we can't talk about a playoff preview and not end up giving our Super Bowl predictions. So so I'll start with you. Uh, who's gonna win the Super Bowl? Oh my gosh! I think I already. I mean, I already said that we're number one seeds in the Super Bowl, so it's just really got to pick the Packers and the Chiefs <laughs> between that. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna lean Packers. I'm gonna lean okay. Packers. I'm gonna say I think the Packers. Um, I'll say yes. Pack. I'll say Packers will win the Super Bowl. Just let's just keep it simple. I'll say Packers will win the Super Bowl. Who I'd like to see win the Super Bowl. Um, Personally, the Bills or the Washington football team, because honestly, I love the comeback story of Alex Smith, and I think it'd be hilarious to see a seven and nine team win the Super Bowl. <laughs> so, okay, all right, all right, I like that. Um, and obviously, you know the 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 football team. There's such a great story there um, in terms of what Ron Rivera has been through, what Alex Smith has been through. Uh, that would be yep, exactly. It, it, would, it would be it would be really cool to see them make a run just for the emotional weight of it um you know what totally. i'm gonna go i'm gonna go real dark horse here i'm gonna say the titans I, the titans are my pick to win the super nice. bowl and the reason is because their deficiencies uh as a team are going to be made up for by the teams that they end up playing so it's not necessarily because i think the titans are the best team in in the league but i think their their road to the super bowl is filled with teams that they can take advantage of. So the Titans, by far, their their weakest aspect is their pass defense. They are 28th in the league in terms of passing yards. They give up a lot of touchdowns through the air. Um, that is their biggest weakness. However, ironically, I think it serves them best when they play a pass-heavy team. The reason is because let's say let's take the Chiefs. Right, the Chiefs are are um, the best passing offense in the league right now. I think it really serves yep. the Titans well to play the Chiefs because the Titans come in with such a run-heavy attack, something that the Chiefs, as we discussed, really struggle to stop. What the Titans can do is keep the Chiefs' offense, keep that passing offense off the field for as long as they possibly can. And as long as you can convert in the red zone, which the Bears didn't do, but the Titans certainly can, um, you know they uh, they're second in the league in rushing touchdowns, so they 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 can score on the ground. As long as they can do that, you keep the Chiefs on the field, off the field. Chiefs offense, you keep them on the back foot, and it forces the Chiefs to start making mistakes. And the one thing that the Titans can do is generate turnovers. They're seventh in the league in turnover percentage. So the one thing they can do is force turnovers. And if the Chiefs are having to play from behind most of the time, that's exactly what you can do. The Titans did that to them last year, and the problem was they did not have the passing offense necessary to be able to move the ball when they needed. Well, now the Titans' passing offense this year, while not great, is at least serviceable, more so than last year anyway. Um, and Ryan Tannehill is playing better. It's all based off of the fact that they can move the ball while running we've seen the fact that the we've seen the titans ability to move the ball when they need to what either through the air or on the ground and uh and so i think against the chiefs that's going to that's that's going to help them win i think against the ravens um they that this the same principle applies and the ravens have the worst passing offense in the league right now um, even though they have been playing better so that makes them a great matchup for the ravens it makes them a great matchup for the chiefs um, and it would make them a great matchup, I think, for the Bills, who right now seem to be the team that are lining up to occupy the other half of the AFC Championship. I think, I think the Titans are built to beat all of those teams, and so then it's just a matter of who comes out of the NFC, and that's projecting so far down the line that it's hard to say, but 
you know, the Titans, I think, are a team that's built to to win championships. Um, I think that the, so totally. goes back to your point in saying that. For right. Sure. So Dark Horse, definitely Titans. But if you held my feet to the fire, you said pick the best team in the NFL right now. Um, I think you'd probably have to say the Chiefs are, are the best team. Doesn't necessarily mean that they, that they would go on to win the Super Bowl. But I think that they are the best oh. team right now. I love talking about NFL playoffs, and I love watching the NFL. I love watching the NFL playoffs, and that is uh, that's exactly what we're going to get. Uh, three games on Saturday and Sunday, first time that's ever happened during the NFL playoffs. So it's going to be a lot of fun, and certainly you can catch both Adam and I on the couch all day, both days, <laughs> watching <laughs> watching every game, as I'm sure a lot of you will be as well. So uh, if you disagree with anything that we've said, please let us know. Um, as always, we love having conversations down in the comments. So, you know, drop a line down there. We'll talk about it. Um, and this is what we'll be talking about, obviously, for the next few days until the wild card round officially begins. So thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for this and all of our content now and in the future. We appreciate you.